Well, health care is clearly a hot button issue in the upcoming elections, but putting politics aside, what is really going on with health care costs? Bloomberg reporter Shannon Pettypiece has been looking at the latest numbers, joins us now to help us out. Shannon, thanks for being with us. Thank you. So tell me, there's a new study out, big new study about health care costs. What's going on? What's the change? Well, if you have paid for health care, have used health care, you probably noticed this over the past few years. Uh, but the average cost for a family health insurance plan is now $15,700 wow. a year. Uh, an inv- even an individual plan, $5,600 is how much it's costing a year. And that's what employers are paying. If you were an individual and you went out to get your own health care plan, it could right. cost you even more. Uh, and as high as that number sounds, that's actually even higher than last year. The price has gone up for a health insurance plan by 4%. Double the rate of inflation is how much the price has gone up to pay for your health insurance. Now, health care costs have been rising faster than inflation for a long time, though, right? Is that is 4%? Is that a big deal? Is that a big change? They, this is actually a slowdown from where they were increasing. Uh, okay. In 2010, the prices went up about 8 9% for a, a health insurance plan. Mm-hmm. So it is slowing, but that doesn't necessarily a good thing because really? what it means is that fewer people are using health care services. They're cutting back to save money in this bad economy. Okay. People are putting off electri- uh, elective procedures, things like a hip replacement or a knee replacement. Mm-hmm. They're using generic drugs instead of brand name drugs. They're right. not going to the doctor to get something or checked out. Or maybe not out. buying their drugs at all. Exactly, right. because they don't want to have to pay those health care costs because everyone's budget's so tight these days. Are employers picking up any of these higher costs, or are they just passing it on to their employees? It's being passed on to the employee. More and more people are seeing a bigger share of their paycheck go to pay their health care. And the biggest burden is being bared by these low-income workers. So this study found that okay. low-income workers, people making around $25,000 a year or less, they have to pay $1,000 more to their health care than higher income workers. The lower income so workers it's a double pay, whammy for right, them. about $5,000 a, a year comes out of their paycheck to pay for their health care costs versus about 4000 for higher cost uh, for higher wage workers. But it, it is really everyone who's having to bear more of a burden. Uh, one in three Americans now, they have to pay a $1,000 deductible for their health care. Back in 2006, it was just one in 10. Mm-hmm. So more and more people having to pay these big high deductibles because employers don't want to bear the cost. They're passing that along. Right. So bigger deductibles, bigger, bigger checks up front to pay for health care and employers doing less to help ease that burden. Yeah. That does and, not sound good. And another thing I should add, uh, a number of CEOs have said that they would be increasing wages more if it wasn't for these big health care costs. A lot of companies have one pool mm-hmm. that they pay for all their, their payroll and benefits and pensions out of. And if that health care piece of the pie is increasing more, they can't increase wages as much as they would like to. I see. So even if you're not paying more for your health care, your wages and your salaries might not be increasing as much because your employer is having to take on more and more health care costs. Right, right. So it would be stealing from Peter to pay Paul or, or not pay Paul as the right, case exactly. may be. Um, what are some of the ways that employers are, are passing these costs on? Some employers are trying to keep their employees, they're trying to control costs by keeping employees healthy, doing more preventative things, okay. uh, weight loss workout programs around the office. Uh, uh, other employers, though, they're just making the employee pay for more, higher deductibles, uh, higher copay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the employee has to pay for more of their premium. Uh, and part of that idea is not only does the employee have to pick up more of the tab, but if you have uh, more you have to pay for out of pocket, maybe you're going to be less likely to go to the doctor to get a expensive right. surgery to use things. So right. it's sort of a different two front attack. So are there any incentives for employers to be offering some of these incentives to their employees to get a cheaper gym membership or to work out or, or nutritional counseling, things yeah, like that? There absolutely are. There are. Uh, a lot of employers are self-insured, meaning they are the ones who pay for their health insurance. Uh, you know, pretty much any major company, they are paying for all of the health care costs of their employees. Okay. So if they can keep an employee out of the emergency room, if they can keep them from getting diabetes or high cholesterol, having a heart attack, these really expensive things, if they can prevent those, that means, yeah, the employer is going to be the one saving the money. There is a very direct benefit between the health of your employees and how much you pay for health care. Right, right. It's just common sense at that point, it sounds like. All right, so we said politics aside, but clearly there are politics involved with health care, especially in this election. So Mitt Romney says if he's elected, he is going to repeal the president's new health care law. 
Is that really even possible? Uh, probably not. Mm. Uh, first of all, he would need uh, 60 uh, votes uh, in the uh, Senate to be able to get past the filibuster to be right. able to Super repeal majority. this whole law. So it, it doesn't look like he is going to have the power in Congress to be able to actually even repeal this law, despite what he's saying. Uh, and just last weekend, he came out and said that there's some parts of this law that he would like to keep. Uh, for example, the, the part of the law that gives uh, coverage to people with pre-existing conditions, although he put in some caveats there about how you'd have to be continuously insured to be able to get coverage with the pre-existing conditions. Right. So he hasn't really laid out a plan for what he is going to replace the Obama health reform law with, if he could, but everybody in the, indus in the industry, of the healthcare industry, is preparing to carry out this law, this going forward. No one expects this law to go anywhere now or pass the Supreme Court. Uh, they expect, even with the President Romney, that this law is going to be the law of the land. It is going to continue going forward. Okay, no turning back. <laughs> Shannon Pettypiece from Bloomberg, thanks so much. Thank